Hey friends, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to my studio. You know I'm always thrilled to have you. So today I have a long awaited video. It is my sketchbook making, hooray! I know I've been talking about this for weeks. Gosh, it might have even been two months ago that I first started talking about needing to make new sketchbooks because as you probably know by now, I make my own. Yes, because I like a very specific type of paper to be in my notebooks. This beautiful high toothed tone paper for my figure drawings and so I have made new sketchbooks for me and for a few of you that have ordered them and today I'm going to show you my entire process. That way, should you feel like it, you are more than welcome to attempt it on your own. However, if you would like one of my handmade sketchbooks, I do a sketchbook release about every six to eight months or something, so follow the link down below to find out the information and I will let you know the next time I have a release so you can snag one either in toned paper or in white paper. Yes, it is very exciting. Um, I hope you really learned something. If you do, make sure you pop that subscribe button. It really helps grow my channel. And then make sure you come back over and over and over again. Um, and it'll, oh, I meant to mention, don't feel like you have to take notes. I know it's going to be a pretty elaborate step-by-step -step today, but lucky for you, I actually made a very, very detailed blog post about three years ago before I had started doing YouTube. So I'm gonna link to that down below and it will have every single material, every single step, super step by step. So just enjoy watching today, get the gist of it, and then follow my blog post down below if you would like to make your own notebooks. Thanks guys. So to begin, let's get all of our materials together. You're going to need an X-Acto knife cutting station, ruler, and pencil to cut your beautiful art paper, tracing paper, as well as binding paper. And then you're going to need either a sewing machine or needle and thread. If you have any questions about these exact materials, make sure you check out my blog post. I've got details about what kind of paper and everything that you'll need. First things first, you're going to want to arrange your paper, making sure that all of the pages are facing the same direction and get rid of any stickers that might be on the back of your sheets. Go ahead and put them in the order that you think you'd like your notebook to be in. Now I noticed that my art paper has the logo of the paper company embossed in it and I don't want that to show up in my notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off about a one inch strip off the end of all of this paper to get rid of the watermark embossing. Now you're ready to cut your paper. You're going to want to make three vertical cuts along the widest part of the paper, making sure that they are all nice and even, stacking your paper so everything matches up. And don't forget to go ahead and put some tracing paper around the outside of each booklet. This is going to make sure to protect your drawings from touching each other once the book has been bound. We are cutting them in long strips like this because we are going to be binding them along the short side, which makes it so much easier for both righties and lefties to draw in portrait as well as landscape position. And now we are going to be preparing the rag paper that will be your binding paper. This I like to actually hand tear because it keeps the beautiful handmade looking deckled edges. Now these pages you are going to want to be about an inch wider and about two inches longer than the interior strip pages that you just created. And this is because this is the paper that will connect your bound booklet to the actual cover. So you need it to be a little bit bigger so that it will make a nice cover over the cloth that you will wrap around the interior of the binding. Trust me, that's going to all make sense in a minute. <laughs> Now go ahead and fold and crease all of the booklets in half so that they will be ready for sewing. I am a seamstress so I'm going to use my sewing machine. However, if you don't have one, don't worry. Make sure you check my blog post below because I have very, very easy instructions on how to hand sew your binding. Now I want to show you a little trick. When you are folding the binding paper, you want to actually fold it about a quarter of an inch down on one side and then about a quarter of an inch down on the other side because you actually want two creases in the binding folder because we'll be putting in two of our little paper leaf booklets in each one. So if you go ahead and make these little folds, see how I'm not quite lining it up and then bringing it down and creasing it, then you're going to have two perfectly lined up spines that you're going to know exactly where your booklets should line up to. See how it already looks like the back of a book? Makes it super easy. 
Okay, now that brings us to the trickiest part, binding the inner leaflets. Now, as I said, you want each binding to match up with one of your creases in the rag paper. As I just said, I'm using my sewing machine, but there is a very easy needle and thread technique that I will show you in my blog post if you look down below. Now, this is key. You really want to take your time and make sure that everything is lined up nicely because Trust me, on some of my earlier books, I did a little sideways and my whole book wound up wonky. So try to make sure that that stitching is as nice and even and perpendicular to the edges of your pages as possible. And once you are finished, your inner binding should look about like this. It'll have two leaflets sewn in there, equal distant from the middle. It actually looks like a book now. So exciting. Okay, so part two will be making the actual outer binding and putting everything together. You'll be using a lot of the same materials as before, but you'll also need a foam board to go along with your X-Acto knife and cutting station. And then of course the inner bound leaflets we just created. Get some cloth for the outside, some scissors to cut it, and some bookmaking glue to put it all together. Now it is going to be time to cut the foam board for your hardback cover. Now you want this to be slightly larger than your inner leaf book booklets as well as the rag paper that you use to affix the inner leaf to the outer leaf binding. Make sure that you are about an inch to an inch and a half wider and about an inch or so longer than your pages. Now you're going to be cutting this into three pieces because you're going to need one piece for the outside front, one piece for the outside back, and then one piece for the spine. You want them to all be the same width apart and the length is just going to depend on your length of pages. I recommend about three quarters of an inch for the width of the spine for our two inner leaflets. Okay, now it is time to cut the cloth that will be used for the outside of your binding. You want to go ahead and lay it down flat, and then we are just going to lay our binding foam boards down to get a general idea of how we want it cut. You want the cloth to be cut about an inch and a half wide around each side because you are going to fold it up and over, and then that inner rag paper leaflet will go over to make really nice edges. Make sure you leave some space between the inner bindings because you do not want the tiny little spine to actually touch the two edges. If you notice on a hardback book, there's a little bit of cloth space and that's what makes the notebook easy to open and close. So make sure you leave some extra room so everything can fold down nicely. Now, obviously, again, I have my fancy seamstress accoutrement, but of course, just a regular pair of scissors along with a marked piece of cloth will work just fine. You don't have to have the fancy roller cutter. Side note, I noticed my cloth was a bit wrinkly from being folded up for so long, so I decided to go ahead and iron it out so everything would be nice and smooth and even to start with. Now somehow I managed to miss filming this step, but basically I took my Mod Podge and my paintbrush and affixed the foam board to the cloth. You can see exactly how it wound up. You just want to use your paintbrush to make a nice, smooth, even coat of the glue and then place it onto the cloth as so. I like to give it about an hour or so to dry before doing this next step of folding and gluing again. Now once you have dried the cloth on the outside, you want to cut some corners before wrapping the inside. Now I use it to cut sort of a chevron shape. You don't want it to be a right angle. You don't want it to be an exact diagonal. You want it to be somewhere in between and the reason being because you want the cloth to slightly overlap when you wrap it over and glue. And speaking of, make sure you do not trim all the way to the very corner. You want to leave about a quarter of an inch from the cloth to the very corner of the foam and that will ensure that it wraps completely and you don't see any little white parts sticking out.
And now it is time to wrap the cover and you will literally use your paintbrush and Mod Podge or other book binding glue like I had just told you about. And you're gonna go along the edges and you're gonna wrap the cloth around and affix it to the glue. And then you will simply do the same thing with the short edges too and making sure to use plenty of glue so that all of the cloth is really down flat and is not sticking up. Like I said, your inner rag paper from the inner leaflet binding is going to cover up all of the edges of this cloth so they don't need to be perfect, they don't need to be even because you won't see them in the end. I actually let these dry out for a few hours so that they will be nice and stiff and no wet glue by the time I am ready to insert the binding. All right, and now that all the glue is dry, everything looks good, things are lining up right, it is time to officially affix the inside to the outside. Now what you will want to do is line up your inside with the outside. That way you know exactly where you should place your glue. So I like to kind of mess around, see how things match up, and then I will start putting my glue. Now you see those two X's? Do not put glue on the binding. You want the binding to be completely free of the inner leaflet throughout the whole time. You will never glue the binding to the inner leaflet. And the reason is being because you need space. You need a little bit of wiggle room so that as you're opening and closing your notebook, things don't get all stuck up in there. Now the way I do it is once I have lined up my book and I know exactly where I want the inner binding to be placed on the outer binding, I will literally just put a thumb where things lined up and hold it tight while I open my notebook back up as you can see, and then I will use a Sharpie to mark exactly where I want that binding to line up. The reason being is because when you open your book flat and lay it flat, it does tend to kind of move a little bit, a little shift from when it is closed. And you want it to be nice and flat, even closed, and don't worry, it will open flat and evenly as well. Then you can go ahead and do the same thing to the other side, making sure to mark it so you know exactly where you would like to place your glue for the binding. Go ahead and grab your Mod Podge or other bookmaking glue out again for the last step. And now you'll pull out your Mod Podge or other book binding glue and go ahead and using nice even strokes again, make sure to cover the inner and back cover completely, but do not paint that spine. Remember we just talked about that. Go ahead and get glue on both sides and then it will be time to actually put your entire book together. Using the marks you just made to line up exactly where you want the paper to go, go ahead and line up the first inner cover and then line up the second inner cover. Now it's going to feel a little bit weird, you're going to kind of have to use your arm or whatever to line it up, but the key is to get it lined up the first time, fold it closed, and then put on some heavy books or something so that it will dry securely in place. So just give your notebooks a little time to dry and oh boy, oh boy, it's like Christmas morning with your brand new beautiful sketchbooks with your most favorite paper ready for your most beautiful drawings. It is so exciting. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait to fill these up. Now, like I said before, if you think you'd like one of my beautiful handmade sketchbooks next time I do a release, pop down below. I've got a link where you can learn all about it. Thanks for being here today, guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.